Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we're going to show you how to replace your rear axle seal on a Toyota 4Runner between the years of 1996 and 2002. The first thing we need to do is remove the rear wheel. I have a link in the description that shows a really easy way how to get your vehicle in the air safely. Before we get started, make sure the parking brake is not set. Next, we need to remove the brake drum by inserting these bolts into these maintenance holes and screwing them in. This will force the brake drum off of its housing. Now we can remove our brake drum. Next, we need to disassemble the inner brake pads for the brake drum. Next, we need to disconnect the emergency brake line. Next, we need to disconnect this brake line that leads into the wheel brake cylinder. Making sure to always use a line wrench when undoing brake lines. We're also going to put a little rubber cap on the end of it so no dust gets in. Uh, however, you are going to need to bleed the brakes after this repair is complete. I have a link in the description that will show you exactly how to do that. Now we can unbolt the inner axle assembly from the outer axle assembly. Once those four nuts have been removed, we can use a screwdriver and kind of pry the inner axle from the outer axle, just like this. Make sure when you pull it out, you do so nice and slowly and you don't damage any teeth on the inner axle. Before we do anything else, we're going to take a bit of emery cloth, sometimes called emery tape, and polish this part of the axle here so when we replace it, it gets a good seal on the new axle seal. Once you're done polishing it off with the emery cloth, we're going to take a regular terry towel and some carburetor spray and make sure it's cleaned very, very well.
We can even repeat this process a few times to ensure we get the best seal possible. Once we're absolutely sure it is completely cleaned, we're going to take a little bit of silicone grease and apply it around where we were just uh, polishing with the emery cloth. Next we're going to clean the back side of the brake assembly here. Next we're going to use a slide hammer to get the rear axle seal out. Next, we're going to clean the inside of the axle. Next, we're going to compare our old axle seal to our new one to make sure that it's identical. Next, we need to take a look at our race and bearing driver set to find the appropriate size. You want the biggest size possible, but can still fit inside of the axle housing. When you are replacing your axle seal with the new one, that little lip right there, you're going to insert it into the axle just the way as it came out. This will ensure a really good seal and none of the differential fluid can escape. Now we're going to use our bearing and race driver and apply as much pressure as you can, as evenly as you can. Uh, however, you don't really need to hammer it in like the Hulk, just tap it in until it's seated in place. Take your finger and run the uh, circumference of the axle seal to make sure that it's even on all sides and there's no gaps or chips or anything like that. Now we can replace our axle by inserting it into the axle housing. It might take some finessing to get the teeth to uh, line up. You don't want to chip any teeth or anything, so you, you need a firm but gentle touch to uh, make sure it's inserted in properly. Now we can re-bolt on the inner axle to the outer axle. Uh, there's four bolts. You're going to want to make sure you uh, start threading them all in before you use something like a pneumatic gun or anything. Uh, and it's also a good idea to bolt them on or tighten them up in a sort of X pattern. Next, we want to reconnect the brake line that we removed earlier, and don't forget to use a line wrench on any kind of brake line.
Now this is very important. Remember to attach your emergency brake line that we removed earlier. Whenever you're changing an axle seal or anything, we know that differential fluid is lost, so we're going to go ahead and add some more. So remove the service port on your differential. Now this is the sort of differential fluid we're going to use. It's a 75W90 synthetic differential fluid. It's available at any auto parts store, and we're going to top it off. And basically, you know how it's full is you keep adding more until it eventually dribbles out, once it starts dribbling out on its own, you can replace the service port and you know that the level is appropriate. Next, we need to reassemble our rear drum brake pads. It goes together exactly the way we took it apart, but in reverse. Now the more keen viewer will notice that uh, the footage is obviously in reverse from the footage we had before. Some of the footage I had that showed uh, the brakes going back together in real time was unfortunately corrupted, uh, but I assure you it's exactly the same procedure as taking it apart as it is uh, putting it back, putting it back together. You know, obviously just in reverse, so that's why we're showing it just like this. But it should go go together no problem. Now we can replace our brake drum. Now we can replace our wheel, making sure that we bolt it on in a star pattern to proper factory specification, which I believe is 95 foot-pounds per lug nut. However, we are not done quite yet. We need to, again, get underneath the vehicle, grab a brake adjustment tool. A large standard screwdriver also works well for this. And we're going to 
take the adjuster wheel that's inside of the drum brakes and ratchet it to the right if you're looking at it from this angle or up, however way you want to look at it. And this will adjust the brakes to push outward. As soon as you can hear the brake pads begin to touch the drum you know, inside the brake assembly, that's when you're going to stop. That's how you know the drum brakes have been calibrated correctly. Thank you so very much for watching. I really, really appreciate you guys uh, subscribe to our channel where we just passed 22,000 subscribers. We've had unbelievable support and I wanted to take the time to thank each and every one of you. You guys mean everything to me. Thank you again. If you're not subscribed, make sure you are. We got some awesome content, automotive related content coming very, very soon. And we'll catch you next time.